New segment in this season 11, the seven things to take home from today's conversation. For the ones that don't have a paper and a pen with them during the interview, that's my way to share you my notes. And narrowing the insights shared by Julie to just seven was a challenge, but hey, it's the rule I said, so here we go. Starting with number one, focus on market needs and testing hypotheses. A Clarity's approach to developing and pivoting its technology is fully based on market feedback and rapid prototyping. Indeed, Julie emphasizes the importance of listening to the market, building and adapting hypotheses, and adjusting based on customer feedback. A great example of that is how Clarity pivoted from a B2C focus in point of entry or point of use applications to tackling PFAS in landfill lead shades in a pragmatic approach linked to economic realities. Let's see, 2021, we've probably decided to make make the change to focus exclusively on PFAS. We had a couple other projects too, I guess, so maybe not exclusively, but now we're very exclusive on PFAS. But I would say 2021 was the kind of the, the turning point on PFAS. Number two, innovate in niche markets before expanding. Once that pivot done, a clarity strive to nail its niche. We develop and deploy proprietary systems that destroy PFAS and liquid waste. We focus mostly in destroying PFAS where it is found, you know, in, in a decent concentration, decent bulk concentration, we found that destroying PFAS in landfill leachate is a really good place to start. Almost 50% of PFAS that's manufactured ends up in a landfill, in the trash. And these landfills are under a lot of scrutiny right now. <laughs> From this focus on PFAS destruction in landfill leachate, Aclarity now considers expanding into broader applications. And that's only possible because of their strong foothold in that first vertical, which allows for in-depth understanding, customer references and testimonials that will enable scaling and exploring additional applications. Number three, customer-driven development. Now you may wonder, where did that landfill leachate niche actually come from? Well, a Clarity has only recently hired a specific salesperson. Before that, the majority of the sales and the, the customers that we have have pretty much all have been inbound. They found us. The landfill side, they found us. It's not like we were actively trying to cold call and search, search and, and figure things out. We didn't figure it out ourselves. They came to us, you know, with a massive problem. And so that's where we were like, <laughs> okay, price point's right. The size is right. The volumes are right. Everything made sense. This highlights the importance of developing solutions that address pressing market problems and letting those challenges drive innovation and product development efforts. Number four, leverage strategic partnerships and investments. Julie highlights several times and across numerous dimensions how a Clarity has benefited from strategic partnerships from investors like Berntel and Ventures and Aqualateral to collaboration with larger companies like Xylem or Denora. For startups, selecting the right partners and investors who understand the market challenges and offer more than just capital can accelerate growth and development. In hindsight, though, Julie had a cheat code to rule many potential partners out, they had to know what PFAS are. Bonus in this one, sometimes the one to know is not the one you'd expect. Said differently, even giants sometimes need startups to show them the way. It's been maybe surprising, maybe not surprising to me, just very honestly, that of all of the channel partners that we work with, Silent and Nora and many others, they look to us to kind of tell them where they should be operating and how they should be operating. Number five, preparation for regulatory compliance. Talking of the PFAS challenge, the anticipation and preparation for future regulatory changes, such as those currently cooked by the US EPA on treatment and disposal, underscore the importance of startups being proactive in compliance and regulatory matters. The big one that all of the landfills are looking out for, and most of the industries that we operate in, even outside of landfills, is in the Clean Water Act. And that's what basically gives states the guidance and mandate to make sure that there's permits around the discharge. That's the big one, and for and for landfills, it's really this Plan 15. This forward-looking approach ensures readiness to adapt and capitalize on regulatory shifts. And come on, we know how regulation is a driver in the water sector. Number six, strategic hiring and team building. One of Julie's first hires when building a Clarity's team was a chief science officer even though she was the brain behind the company's first patent and original science. It was a no-brainer to, to get Oren on, on board. There still isn't anybody who would have been better suited to take over the technology side and the, the science side. Oren joined the team 
It's been an amazing decision. He's wonderful. And he helped to drive the, the technical aspects of the product and of the, of the company while I was able to get funding, meet customers, secure partnerships. I certainly wouldn't have been able to do it if Orin, Orin didn't join the company. That's a great example of strategic focus on where she would add the most value and where empowering her team would be the most beneficial. By the way, if that's appealing to you, a Clarity has several positions open. The link is in the description. Number seven, bootstrapping and careful financial management. A Clarity's initial years were marked by bootstrapping and leveraging grants, which required careful financial management and strategic decision making to maximize the impact impact of limited resources. It's all about management of resources and making really good decisions. And I haven't made the best decisions, but I would say that overall, <laughs> relatively proud of the decisions that we've been able to make <laughs> and the progress we made with such small this resources. Strat this strategy allowed a clarity to reach significant milestones without diluting equity prematurely and ensured they had the rubber on the ground and ready for acceleration when the time for that had come. As I said, I could have taken more, but I think seven is a good chunk to go out and apply. So here you have it. If you think I've missed one that's even more important than those seven, come tell me on LinkedIn or by mail. My mail is in the description. And remember, that episode came to you free of charge, but I would believe not free of value. It takes me quite some time to put all of those together every week. So all I'm asking is for you to help me distribute them. So take this episode, share it with a friend, a colleague, your boss, or your team, and I'll be back with another one next week.